And welcome back to our live coverage out here on practice court one at the Billie Jean King USTA National Tennis Center where we have world number one Rafa Nadal who has just taken the practice court ready to face off against number three in the world longtime rival Juan Martin Del Pocho. Each of these men have been a U.S. Open champion in the past. Del Pocho, of course, the 2009 champion. Rafa Nadal, the defending champion, but also won in 2010 and 2013. Nadal and Del Pocho have faced off 16 times in their career, Nadal winning 11 of those matchups. Most recently, they faced off at the championships at Wimbledon just a couple of months ago in the quarterfinals, Nadal winning a five-set thriller going down two sets to one before pulling it out 6-4 in the fifth. Nadal with a more comfortable straight set victory over Juan Martin Del Potro at the French Open in the semifinals this year. They also faced off in the semis at last year's U.S. Open. Nadal winning that one in four sets, 6-2 in the fourth, and they'll face off tomorrow in the men's semi-final. Rafa Nadal on the season with five tournament victories. He won the Masters 1000 in Monte Carlo, where he defeated Kay Nishikori in the final. He won Barcelona, defeating Tsitsipas. He won the Masters 1000 in Rome, defeating Sasha Zverev. Of course, he won the French Open title, a record 11th French Open for Rafa Nadal defeating Dominic Thiem in that final and most recently won the Masters 1000 in Toronto, once again defeating the young Greek player Stefano Tsitsipas in that final. He was a semi-finalist at Wimbledon, losing to Novak Djokovic in a hard-fought five-setter. Nadal with a couple of match points in that match that Novak Djokovic was able to fend off. Rafa was a quarter-finalist at the Australian Open as well as in Madrid. Of course, now a semifinals here at the U.S. Open as well. Rafa Nadal this year won a record 11th title at three events. It was his 11th Monte Carlo title, his 11th Barcelona title, and of course the 11th French Open title. By winning the French Open this year, he tied Margaret Court for the most titles won at a single Grand Slam of Margaret Court, of course, with 24 singles Grand Slam titles. She had 11 Australian Opens. Rafa Nadal in his career has been solid in five-set matches. Of course, we saw the five-set thriller against Dominic Thiem, the Austrian, just a couple of nights ago. That going into the wee hours of the morning with Nadal pulling it out 7-6 in the fifth set after losing the first set 6-love. Nadal, after the post-match interview, not leaving the court until around 2.30 in the morning. That a classic, iconic U.S. Open thriller. But he has been solid throughout his career in five-set matches. He's 111-2 and two in best of five-set matches on clay. He earned his 900th career win when he competed in the French Open this year. He also won his eighth Rome title this year, his 33rd Masters 1000 title. That's a record. He passed Roger Federer for most Masters 1000 wins and tied him for consecutive seasons on the tour with a title. Now 15 consecutive years with a title for Rafa Nadal. Rafa Nadal won 50 straight sets on clay this year. That's an open air record for any single surface. That was until the man that he had that battle with a few nights ago, Dominic Thiem, stopped his run in the quarterfinals of Madrid. Rafa Nadal broke the all-time record with 24 straight Davis Cup singles and doubles wins this year. Nadal, after winning the Masters 1000 in Toronto, decided to withdraw from the Masters 1000 in Cincinnati, the last major tune-up before the U.S. Open, citing 
some fatigue after that long run in the Canadian Open. Nadal electing to get some extra rest and recovery before the U.S. Open. That's a decision that has certainly seemed to come in handy with all the long matches that he's been playing, and especially with that nearly five-hour match against Dominic Team. Nadal, however, with now two days of recovery before facing off against Juan Martin Del Potro. Nadal has had a tough past three rounds after handily defeating David Ferrer and Vasek Pospisil in the opening two rounds. He was down a set and a break against Karen Kachanov, the big serving Russian in the third round. He dropped the third set to Nikolaus Basilashvili in the fourth round before winning 6-4 in the fourth and of course had that five-set battle against Dominic Team. truly one of the greatest matches in U.S. Open history. Nadal hoping that he can use some of the confidence that he gained in that match to pull through against Juan Martin Del Potro tomorrow in the semis. That match expected to be underway at 4 p.m. Eastern. An email just released by the USTA saying that due to the extreme heat once again today, all junior and wheelchair matches scheduled to start at noon or later have been temporarily suspended due to the U.S. Open extreme heat policy once again in effect. We'll see whether that remains in effect for the women's semifinal matches to come later this evening beginning at 7 Eastern. This is yet another day here at the Open where those extreme heat policies have been implemented. Rafa Nadal, of course, a 17-time Grand Slam champion, trying to inch closer and closer to the record set by Roger Federer. Federer now at 20 Grand Slams, but of course was ousted from the tournament by John Millman, the unsuspecting Aussie in the quarterfinals. Nadal now with an opportunity to pick up another slam and move to number 18 overall, potentially. We are waiting for Juan Martin Del Potro to join us out here on the practice course as well. He will be, or scheduled to be on the court any time now. Joey Brander here with you, of course, all tournament long, and we'll stay with you all tournament long, bringing you live player practices as well as all the behind-the-scenes coverage that you can't find anywhere else. Make sure you keep it tuned in on U.S. Open social media and at Joey Brander as well. See in the comments saying, let's hope for another epic match. Leonora Rua rooting for Juan Martin Del Potro. All of in the comments picking Rafa Nadal to take home the title. A deal in the comments supporting Rafa as well. Niffin in the comments saying the slice backhand of Rafa against Del Potro will be crucial, of course, Juan Martin Del Potro, one of the best ball strikers in the game, especially on the forehand side. It'll be important for Rafa to use quite a bit of variety in that match. Juan Martin Del Potro, so big, so strong, coming in at over 6'5", and packing one of the biggest forehands in the game. It'll be important for Rafa to try and keep the ball out of the strike zone, either up above the shoulders with heavy topspin or below the knees with biting slice. 
Jordan Dahl, of course, is one of the best heavy balls in the game, especially on the forehand side. That ball going through the court, up over the net, clearing the net by five to ten feet or more at any given time, and kicking up well over the shoulder of his opponents, pushing them back deep into the court, not allowing them to hit off their front foot and strike the ball and get on offense. Nadal has also improved that slice quite a bit over the past few years. You see it right there, a beautiful slice from Rafa Nadal. He's also used the drop shot very effectively all season long. It'll be important for Rafa to use all the tools in his toolbox in this U.S. Open semifinal. We are still waiting for Juan Martin Del Potro to come out on the practice court. We expect him to be here any second now, at least within the next couple of minutes. Originally scheduled for 12 o'clock noon, but also scheduled at 12.30, so we can come out at either of those two times. They will be practicing side by side, Will Rafa Nadal and Juan Martin Del Potro. It is a very warm day out here. The sun directly shining onto the practice courts. And all taking a few seconds to towel off before getting back out on the court, hitting with his coach, former world number one Grand Slam champion, U.S. Open semifinalist Carlos Moya. Truly one of the great Spanish players in tennis history. Nadal has really struggled to find his rhythm quite a bit in the tournament thus far. Frustrated with himself at different points in each of the last three matches due to that lack of timing. Of course, dropped the first set 6 love to Dominic Team. That's something we're certainly not used to seeing from Rafa. One of the few times in his entire career he's lost a set by that margin. Of course, today is women's semifinal day. Those matches will be kicking off at 7 Eastern. We'll also have the doubles semifinals, the Brian and Sock American duo among the teams still remaining. Serena Williams against Anastasia Sevastova will be the first match, the first semifinal underway this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern in Arthur Ashe Stadium, followed by Madison Keys and Naomi Osaka. Mike Bryan and Jack Sock, the American duo, will face off against Kabul and Farah. Second match on Louis Armstrong Stadium. Coco Goff, the Number one seed, young American, just 14 years old, one of the top juniors in the world. She'll be playing in the junior girls singles third round on court 17, starting as soon as the extreme heat policy has been lifted. And of course, we'll keep you updated as the full schedule is announced for tomorrow as well with the men's semifinal matches coming. Rafa Nadal taking a well-deserved 
break in the shade. Juan Martín Del Pocho, of course, has played some fantastic tennis throughout the U.S. Open. Rafa Nadal semifinal opponent Del Pocho had not dropped a set through his first four matches, defeating the American qualifier Donald Young, the American Dennis Kugla, the 31 seed Fernando Verdasco, who was fresh off of a victory over Andy Murray, and next-gen superstar Croatian Borna Cioric, all four in straight sets before dropping the first set to top-ranked American John Isner. On Tuesday, Del Potro, however, able to battle back from dropping that first set, win the next three, six, two in the fourth to clinch a spot in the semifinal against Rafa Nadal. Carlos Moya is still playing some exceptional tennis as well. He's now 42 years old, which was just his birthday about a week ago, but the former French Open champion still playing fantastic tennis here with Rafa Nadal. Joel Nakamens showing support for Rafa Nadal, as is Eva. Akira in the comments saying, cheering for Del Potro, but good luck to Rafa as well. Of course, two true legends of the game are Rafa Nadal and Juan Martin Del Potro. We are still waiting for Juan Martin Del Potro. Expect him to be out here within the next couple of minutes. Make sure you stay tuned for that. Of course, we do have the world number one Rafa Nadal out here on the practice courts. The doll did not practice here on the grounds yesterday, I'm sure, resting and recovering from that match that went into the wee hours of the morning against the young Austrian Dominic team. That was the first day of the tournament. The doll did not make an appearance here on the practice courts, but he looks well rested and fresh so far today. Of course, he did have some issues in that match against Kachanov. His knees were taped, but we have not seen the knees taped since then. Victoria in the comments through cheering for Delpo, Rose cheering for Rafa, Dorothy saying, love them both. Rafa and his coach chatting a bit about making sure he stays down and rotates his hips through the ball extending that point of contact and finishing all the way through up and around his shoulder rather than pulling off of the ball or lifting up too quickly. And Dahl, of course, one of the most effective forehands in the game. Uses it to dictate points, get the ball into the patterns that he prefers, his forehand attacking his right-handed opponents backhands, kicking the ball up high over their shoulders. Rafa was especially frustrated with his backhand in the early rounds, but seems to be hitting it quite well today, making sure to try and hit as many backhands as possible to get the rhythm on that side. 
and all toweling off once again in this humidity. Fans crowding in the stands to watch the world number one get his practice session in. Both Nadal and team in their match, changing their outfits at multiple points, changing rackets at multiple points. Rafa sending three or four rackets in to be restrung at different points of the match. The tough conditions and humidity certainly having their way with the players and their equipment. Of course, also slowing the ball down out here. We'll see what the forecast looks like for tomorrow and how that may impact Del Pocho and Rafa, whether the conditions will quicken up a bit or stay as slow as they've been for the past couple of days, slower than the typical conditions here at the U.S. Open and on hard court. Nadal a bit frustrated with those couple of balls in the net there. 80% humidity at the moment. Here in Flushing Meadows. We've seen a couple of breezes make their way through the grounds over the past few days, but none of that thus far today. It is a hot one. There's an example of that beautiful heavy ball right there. That one pushing Carlos Moya back deep into the court. Rafa really showed the heart of a champion in that match against Dominic Team. It was tough conditions. He didn't feel fully comfortable on the court, didn't seem to have his rhythm or his timing, was facing against, was facing off against an opponent that was playing some of the best tennis of his career. Team had quite a bit of confidence going into the match, having just defeated last year's finalist Kevin Anderson. That was Team's first hardcore victory over Anderson in their careers. Team was feeling great and was truly striking the ball and hitting one of the most effective balls we've seen from his career. The racket head speed was exceptional throughout the match from both players, especially going late into the matches. The players started to wear down a bit or get a bit fatigued. Their racket head speed did not drop. They kept accelerating through the ball and playing some fantastic tennis. But Rafa, despite dropping that first set six love in just 22 minutes, despite facing quite a few break points and being unable to convert on break points against team. Nadal, the great fighter that he is, one of the greatest fighters in tennis history, found a way to will himself to that victory. And truly earned that spot in the semifinals to face off against Juan Martin Del Potro. coach telling him to continue rotating through the ball, also to be aggressive with his footwork. We saw Rafa and Carlos Moya work on some hand-tossed 
drills in practice a couple days ago. That, of course, to work on, work on the footwork as well. One of those drills where his coaches were saying that if you can take four steps to a ball, take 10. Take as many small and quick steps as possible, moving around the ball, continuing to adjust and readjust your positioning to make sure your point of contact is where it should be. Nadal, one of the hardest workers on tour, certainly takes his fitness, his mental preparation, his tactical preparation, his mastery of the strokes incredibly seriously, constantly working on improving his game despite being one of the all-time greats in the sport. Phyllis in the comments saying, go Rafa, best of all time. Angie in the comments reading for Rafa as well. Carol in the comments showing her support for Rafa Nadal, the world number one. Nadal spending some extra time to work on his backhand going working on cross court pattern driving the ball deep through the court hitting the ball off his front foot before running around it and taking that inside out forehand back down the line Henry saying, vamos Rafa. Connie in the comments, hoping Juan Martin Del Potro will reach another US Open final. Carlos Moya nodding at Rafa. Pleased with what he saw on the backhand side right there. Nah, Rafa looking a bit more pleased as well. Emmy saying Rafa looks tired. Well, I certainly wouldn't blame them. Incredibly difficult conditions out here today. And of course, still recovering from that match against Dominic Team, but moving quite well as always out on the court. And of course, we expect Rafa to be playing his best tennis and fighting as always out on the court in the semis. Let us know in the comments all of your predictions for the semifinal matches. Rafa Nadal against Juan Martin Del Potro, the number one and three players in the world respectively against each other. We'll also have Novak Djokovic, 13-time Grand Slam champion against Kei Nishikori, the 2014 runner-up here at the Open. Lowe is asking when does Rafa play next? He'll face off against Del Potro tomorrow. from the forehand corner. Such incredible height, depth, and spin on the ball. Such a heavy ball, incredible number of revolutions on that ball as it pushes over the net. You saw in those last two balls there, Carlos Moya forced to hit those backhands high without shoulder height, unable to really put too much pace on them. That's what Rafa's going to be looking to do against Del Potro as well. Dustin picking Rafa against Novak in the final. 
two of them, of course, one of the most storied rivalries in tennis history. Let us know all your predictions for the semifinals in the comments. Who are you picking to reach the final, and who are you picking to take home the title? Will Rafa Nadal, the 2017 champ, be able to be able to defend his title and win a second consecutive U.S. Open crown? Will it be Juan Martín Del Potro winning his first Grand Slam since 2009? Will it be Novak Djokovic tying Pete Sampras with 14 overall, or will it be Kei Nishikori coming back from that 2014 final and finally capturing his first Grand Slam? Lois asking what time they play tomorrow. The full schedule not yet released, but we'll keep you updated on that as we are told. One comment saying he seems a bit tired, but his footwork is next level. Rafa Nadal with some exceptional footwork, something he continues to work on regularly, something that truly sets him apart as he is able to grind his opponents down on the court, something we saw him do just a couple of nights ago in that thriller against Dominic Team. Rafa Nadal enjoying a couple of minutes over there in the shade, speaking with his team and, of course, tennis legend Carlos Moya, the two of them former Davis Cup teammates. Moya now part of Nadal's team, working as his coach. Very warm day out here in Flushing Meadows, but the passionate tennis fans are still out here to catch a glimpse of the world number one Rafa Nadal in some of his final preparation before that battle to come against the number three player in the world, Juan Martin Del Potro. Tanya in the comments saying, I'm going to Arthur Ashe Stadium now. Well, Tanya, thanks for coming out to the Open today. We certainly appreciate you joining us. If you're in the New York area, make sure you come on out to the Open. We have a couple more exciting days of tennis to come. Never a dull moment here at the Open where you can see all the best players in the world facing off. Nadal has had a tendency to have some longer practice sessions on his off days, some of the longer practice sessions of any of the players in the men's draw that we've seen. Rafa, of course, always one of the hardest workers on tour, loves to stay out here and keep working until he finds his rhythm, gets his timing, and feels comfortable and prepared on the court. They've been working on a couple of different things every day in practice. Um, specifically tailored to his next round opponent. Of course, make sure you keep it locked in with us on US Open social media. Joey Brander here with you all day and all tournament long. We'll have Juan Martin Del Potro's practice coming up in a little bit. We're waiting for him to join us out here on the practice court. Should be out here within a matter of minutes. Rafa Nadal, of course, on the court right now. We'll be bringing you the live practices from the women's semifinals as they take the court to prepare for those semifinal matches to come later this evening. Serena Williams, Anastasia Sevastova, Madison Keys, and Naomi Osaka will be bringing you all four of their practices live later this afternoon beginning at 4 Eastern. Thank you, of course, to everyone for joining us all around the world. We love all of our international fans. Tennis truly a global game, and the U.S. Open truly a global tournament. Thanks to everyone for watching and commenting all tournament long and engaging with us in conversation about the game we all love. Juan picking Juan Marti uh, picking Rafa in the tournament. Ushna picking Juan Martin Del Potro. Cindy in the comments saying, go Rafa, go. Francis picking Rafa to take home the title as well.
Profit now heading back on the court after a well-deserved quick break. Joey Brander here with you once again, all tournament long. Make sure you keep following us on US Open social media and at Joey Brander as well for all the behind the scenes coverage throughout the tournament. Rafa Nadal and Carlos Moya, a couple of folks who understand what it's like to be the number one ranked player in the world out here preparing for Juan Martín del Potro. This is one of those drills we mentioned specifically tailored for this matchup against Juan Martín del Potro. Carlos Moya stepping in, taking a ball about mid-court, an approach shot that he's really accelerating on, driving deep into the court preparing Rafa for what it will be like to face some big forehands from Juan Martin Del Pocho, who of course one of the biggest forehands on tour. But Nadal, if you watch his footwork, was not retreating further back. Of course, we oftentimes see Rafa Nadal in his return position back towards the back wall, and sometimes even during rallies as well, standing quite a bit far back hitting heavy balls and just trying to grind his opponents down, but Nadal staying about midway between the baseline and the back fence for these balls. Moya stepping in, hitting a horizontal swing across his body, driving this ball through the court, trying to put some pace on it and force Nadal to have a compact swing on the forehand side and deflect the pace back into the court. Nadal trying to put as much depth on the ball in return as possible to stop Juan Martin Del Pocho from having multiple opportunities in the middle of the court. Del Pocho is so dangerous on the forehand side, if you give him a couple of cracks at it, he can finish points very, very quickly. Alexis in the comments saying, go Del Pocho. Mohammed cheering for Rafa. Ashatosh saying Rafa takes down Delpo in four sets. Let us know all your predictions for the match to come tomorrow, both semifinals. Beverly saying good luck Rafa from South Africa. Well, Beverly, thank you for joining us. won his first Grand Slam title at the French Open in 2005. He was one of the top juniors in the world, one of the top young players in the world, but really asserted himself as a future great in that 2005 French Open. He defeated Mariano Puerta in the final. That a four-set match, and it all dropped the first set. That was his first French Open appearance and his first Grand Slam as a seeded player, but Nadal certainly was not trying to wait for greatness, went out and won that title. Nadal's first U.S. Open came in 2010 when Juan Martín Del Potro was the defending champion, but could not participate after undergoing a wrist operation in May of 2000. 10, Rafa Nadal winning that title over Novak Djokovic in a four-set battle. Nadal, of course, also won the 2013 U.S. Open title over Novak Djokovic once again in four sets before defeating Kevin Anderson, the six-foot-eight big-serving South African, in the final last year for his third U.S. Open crown. Nadal, a two-time gold medalist, was the doubles gold medalist of 2016 games in Rio and singles in 2008 Beijing. He's a four-time Davis Cup champion. Hey, 
Carlos Moya and Rafa Nadal. Here you see on the court, coach and player were teammates when Nadal won his first Davis Cup in 2004. Moya playing at the number one position, Nadal playing at the number two position. Moya came out with a victory over American Marty Fish. They faced the U.S. in that Davis Cup final. Nadal defeated Andy Roddick for Juan Carlos Ferrero and Tommy Robredo fell to Bob and Mike Bryan, but Carlos Moya was able to seal the Davis Cup for the Spanish squad, defeating Andy Roddick 7-6 in the third set to win that Davis Cup for Spain. As we spoke about before and as some of the comments were alluding to, although I'm sure he's still quite tired from that five-set battle, although the conditions are quite tough, humid and hot out here today, Rafa Nadal's footwork never ceases. You see him taking those small steps around the ball. Rafa seemingly never hitting a ball out of position. TC in the comments cheering on Rafa Nadal. Tracy saying, come on champ, you can do it. Yeah. And all bit frustrated with himself on that. Forehand in the net. And a ball off the frame right there. But the one thing to keep into account for the young players watching at home is Nadal is so good at shifting gears when he plays, knowing when to start accelerating more on the ball, knowing when to take a little bit of pace off and start grinding and keep putting more balls into the court. You saw he was frustrated with himself after he accelerated on the one ball and left it in the net. Nadal always frustrated when he hits a ball in the net. That not an acceptable miss for the world number one. So immediately on the next ball, he shifted down a gear and started taking a little bit more pace off the ball, hit it with more height and spin cleared the net by about six to eight feet to make sure that he did not repeat that same mistake twice. Nadal would have done that for a few more balls until he felt like he had his feel in the rally and then he would start stepping back into the court and accelerating more, switching from a vertical to a horizontal swing as he got more comfortable. That gear shifting on the court, always an important piece of stringing points together and winning hard-fought three out of five set matches on the court. Caitlin in the comments referencing the several water breaks we've seen Rafa take. It is over 90 degrees here. It is roughly 80 percent humidity here. Hot, humid, tough conditions. Rafa making sure to stay hydrated out here on the court. Cindy in the comments saying, sending good luck and love from Florida as Rafa comes into the net now to take some volleys. We saw Rafa Nadal charge the net quite a bit in his match against Dominic Team, Especially on big points, Nadal not wanting to wait and be defensive on some of those bigger points, especially with how well Dominic Team was striking the ball and how he was continuing to increase his racket head speed and push the ball deep through the court. Nadal wanting to get on offense quickly and use that big forehand to work his way into the net. And especially later in the match, Nadal was very effective working his way up into the net. takes a few overheads after that. Of course, we'll see him take some serves and returns. Dominic Team was serving incredibly well, some of the best that we've seen him serve in that match against Rafa. In the fifth set especially, Nadal was, or Dominic Team rather, fended off quite a few break points. He had a 15-40 down game that he ended up fighting back in. He had a 30-40 game he ended up fighting back in. He had a love 40 game at one point in the match, but 
it seemed like every time team was facing a break point, he came up with another serve in the high 120s or low 130s and used his powerful ground strokes to extend the game and end up saving the break points, not allowing Rafa to pull ahead in that match. That was, of course, eventually decided by a tiebreaker. Jan in the comments saying, 80% humidity, please go inside and hit. Well, Jan, we certainly wouldn't mind that either, but we're out here alongside Rafa Nadal on the practice courts. The fans, the players, the coaches all battling through these temperatures together. Glenn saying, vamos Rafa, hope you do well next match. Of course, that match against the three seed Juan Martin Del Pocho coming tomorrow. Carolina in the comments saying, vamos Rafa. Let us know all your predictions for that semifinal match against Juan Martin Del Potro to come tomorrow. Also, let us know your picks and predictions for the battle between Raha, between Novak Djokovic and Kay Nishikori. Nishikori, the 2014 finalist. Rafa Nadal taking a quick break, checking his phone. I'm sure Rafa currently watching this very stream here on US Open social media while he checks his phone during his break. There you see two of the greatest Spanish tennis players of all time. Moya has done such a great job sharing his experiences with Rafa, someone that Rafa looked up to growing up, a legend for all of Spanish tennis. Moya always so cool, calm, and collected. Even when Rafa got down that first set, six love, Moya looked so calm in the box, did not look flustered. His emotions did not waver. He knew that when you're playing in a Grand Slam and it's three out of five, even after the first set, there's still a lot of tennis to be played, and Rafa could find a way to fight through and will himself to that victory. And as Rafa Nadal takes Another break. We're going to take a break as well. But of course, make sure you keep it locked in with us here on US Open social media. Juan Martin Del Potro is still scheduled to come out here at some point within the next couple of minutes. The world number three will be practicing, preparing to face Rafa Nadal. We'll be bringing you all of the women's semifinalists starting at 4 Eastern in their practice sessions live, highlighted, of course, by Serena Williams, the 23 time Grand Slam champ. We'll see her preparing for that semi-final match. And stay with us tomorrow as well as we bring you Rafa Nadal, Juan Martin Del Potro, Novak Djokovic, and Kay Nishikori as they prepare for the men's semifinals to come tomorrow afternoon. Another hot day out here in Flushing Meadows, but we'll be back with you in just a little bit. Joey Brander here with you live all tournament long. Make sure you keep following us on US Open social media and at Joey Brander. And we will be right back.